What is going on guys? Eagle Aquatics back here and this video is going to be another top 10 video this time about top 10 saltwater beginner fish for the beginner reef or just plain saltwater uh, aquarist. So I got a lot of hits and views on um, my last video about the top 10 freshwater beginner fish. You guys seem to like that so because my views are skyrocketing so thank you guys for that. So I figured I'd make one this time on saltwater since I have a lot of saltwater views as well. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed this video or enjoy this video and um, I'll be counting down my personal opinion of the top 10 perfect beginner uh, saltwater aquarium fish. Uh, this, these fish could be housed in regular just plain saltwater tanks or reef tanks as well. Um, so we'll be counting down 10 to 1. Uh, it'll be in random order. Uh, I just randomized them because I believe they're all perfect. Uh, so let's start out with number 10 being Chromis. I love Chromis um, because they're a much better alternative than um, damsels because they're not aggressive. They're an awesome schooling fish and they are really, really cool colors. Uh, the blue and green reef Chromis uh, make a showpiece of a schooling fish inside of a reef aquarium or just plain saltwater aquarium uh, because they got that nice turquoise um, body and it, it has a really cool shimmer effect if you got the light, right lights and uh, they, they do great in schools, they're really easy to care for and uh, they're also pretty hardy, almost as hardy as uh, damselfish but the reason I recommend them over damsels is because damsels are very very aggressive and I personally don't like keeping those guys because they pick on all the other fish. And Chromis do the exact opposite. They're very peaceful and the perfect, one of the perfect beginner um, reef aquarium fish. Um, so they do not get big either, and they're they're very cheap. Uh, you can find them as low as five bucks each. I've seen them. They're very cheap. Um, great addition to the tank. Super hardy and. Uh, just overall really cool fish. Uh, so let's get on to number nine, which are blennies, uh, particularly uh, starry blennies, bicolor blennies, algae blennies, and tail spot blennies. Uh, I've kept pretty much all these guys except for the tail spot blenny. Uh, the starry blenny being my favorite of all of the blenny family because of the coloration. I have done a care guide on this guy so make sure you go check that out. But starry blennies are by far my favorite because if you look at them, their color pattern is just outrageous. It no other fish is colored this way. It looks it's a stark black body with it looks like stars all over it, white spots and everything. Super cool fish. The bicolor blenny I also kept. Uh, half of it's like a blue, purple, and then the back half tail. It's like an orangish, really awesome. They don't get it as big as starry blennies, but um, they're very cool. Another great one is also the algae blenny, as I mentioned. Extremely good algae eater. These guys are all very good algae eaters. Um, the algae blenny probably being the best one. I kept one that was my very first, one of my very first fish. Um, constantly pecking at the rocks, eating all the algae. Um, and then the tail spot blenny is also really cool. Never kept one, um, but I hear they're really cool. This is, tail spot blenny is the smallest of all these guys, um, and he's really cool as well. I hope to keep one one day, but I love blennies. One of the coolest fish in the saltwater hobby. And uh, yeah, uh, they don't get very big. Um, starry blennies and Midas blennies gets get pretty big, um, but. Uh, they, uh, they could be housed in less than 30 gallons of water easily. They're great algae eaters. Uh, they're pretty hardy. I wouldn't say extremely hardy, uh, but they're pretty hardy. Um, make sure you feed them a good diet, um, like brine shrimp, mysis shrimp, seaweed, stuff like that, and you'll be successful with these guys. They get along with uh, most every fish on this list, um, so, and they're not very expensive. Uh, ranging around 30 bucks, so that's not too bad. <clears throat> so let's get on to number eight, being dwarf angelfish. 
I love dwarf angelfish, by far one of my favorite of all the species on this list. Um, I just had my hand at um, trying to keep a dwarf angelfish in this bigger aquarium that I have right here. As you can see, there is a coral beauty angelfish in the corner by the anemone. Uh, probably one of my top favorite fish in this aquarium right now, mostly because of their personality and their colors. Like uh, specifically, the best one for beginners are coral beauties and flame angels. I wouldn't really recommend the other ones because they are more prone to possibly nipping at corals. All these guys are prone to possibly nipping at corals. You either get one that does or get one that doesn't. Most of the time, they will not bother the corals. Um, but you might get that one that does uh, have a taste for corals, so just watch out. But my personal opinion, coral beauties and flame angels are the best for the beginner. Uh, dwarf angels, dwarf is in their name, so they do not get um, very big. Uh, I think max around four inches, five inches. Uh, they don't require a very big aquarium. I go no less than 40 gallons on these guys. Um, they're very, they're peaceful. I've never seen mine bother anything in the tank. Uh, they love grazing on the algae, so really good algae eater for the aquarium. And uh, just an overall great fish. Um, Coral Beauty Angelfish probably have the, uh, the one in this tank probably has the most colors out of all these fish. Uh, he's got that purple with the orange and those like stripes all over it. It's really, really cool. Uh, and the Flame Angel, oh my gosh. Just orange, bright orange, uh, black stripes. I mean, a showpiece for a, a mid-sized reef aquarium. Perfect fish. Uh, they're really cool. They are a little more pricey than the rest of the fish on this list. Um, ranged into about 40 to like I think $70 for a flame uh, but more realistically probably around 60 bucks um, but it's definitely worth it these guys are very hardy uh, mine when I got him he actually had an eye infection so he's actually blind in one eye and he managed to survive all of that uh, so I would say they're a very uh, hardy fish they're super easy to take care of. Mine eats all the flakes, all the stuff I feed in the tank. They love eating algae. And, uh, but the only thing with these guys, one to a tank. You cannot put another one in. They will fight. Uh, they probably will kill each other. And you can only have one in an aquarium, just like clownfish. Uh, so definitely don't put another dwarf angel in there with them, with the one that's already in it, because it will not go good. So that's definitely keep in mind, um, but great beginner fish, in my opinion. Uh, the next one on this list uh, being the Royal Grama. I love Royal Grama. I've kept a few in the past. Um, they are a more shy fish, uh, but once you have them for a while, they learn to come out and um, be personable and swim around with the other fish. Uh, they are very, very colorful. One half of the body is bright purple, and the other half is um, bright yellow. Uh, super cool fish. They don't run you a lot of money. They're not very expensive at all. Um, and they're the most peaceful of all of the basslets. I don't really recommend basslets for the beginner because they are very aggressive, just like damsels. But the Royal Grama is a basslet, but it's not, um, not uh, territorial or aggressive. At least the ones I haven't kept. I haven't heard of anybody uh, complaining about their aggression to other fish. So it's definitely an awesome fish. Uh, they have super cool colors. They are reef safe. Um, and yeah, they're not aggressive like other bassets. So yeah, really, really, really cool fish. Uh, they'll probably run you around 15 to 20 bucks. But yeah, I highly recommend that guy too. Um, Next fishes on this list goes to gobies. Uh, gobies are very good um, beginner fish, but specifically I would recommend yellow prawn gobies, um, neon blue, those mini guys, and uh, orange stripe and diamond watchman gobies. I've kept a lot on this list. I've kept the yellow prawn goby. Uh, very, very cool fish. They'll dig like a little burrow um, in the sand. 
you could get all these guys with a pistol shrimp, uh, which is a super cool du duo if you're willing to take the chance on a pistol shrimp. Um, but uh, yellow prawn gobies are really cool. They're not very expensive. They are pretty hardy and easy to feed. Um, and they got really cool colors and a, a cool personality. Uh, they'll peek out of the hole and like dart after food. It's, it's a cool bottom fish, more for the reef. Uh, neon blue gobies are really awesome. Uh, they're really, really tiny, but they are very hardy. And other fish don't bother them as you think they would, but they don't because these guys clean the other fish off. I've kept one in the past, they're really cool. Uh, they're really tiny, they got that striking like electric blue line that goes down them, and a really, really cool fish. Uh, the orange striped goby, I have not keep, kept this fish yet, um, but it is really cool. You got the spot on the dorsal fin, and they, I think, are known um, the best goby to um, host uh, the tiger pistol shrimp. So if you want a pistol shrimp, get that goby. Um, and the diamond watchman goby or the sand sifting goby, also a really good choice too if you want him to sift through your sand bed, keep it clean. Uh, he's a really cool fish. Uh, I, have, I have kept one of these guys in the past. Not the easiest fish to keep because um, he is a little bit of a picky eater at least in my experience, uh, but they're really, really fun to watch. Really unique fish, and uh, yeah. Uh, none of these guys are too expensive. Uh, the Diamond Watchman's probably the most at like $35, $40, but uh, gobies are definitely a great beginner fish. Uh, next one on this list, I may get some hate for this one, but I'm putting tangs on this list. If you're a beginner and you have a big enough tank, I'm talking like, 75 gallons or larger then tangs would be perfect for any tank like that I love tangs I had this purple tang in there I rescued him from Petco and slowly becoming one of my favorite fish of all time uh, they're so cool and they're so easy to take care of uh, just a super cool fish tons of personality always swimming throughout the whole tank just awesome. But the reason I put them on this list is they're so easy to care for and they're very, very hardy. Uh, I got this tank from Petco. All of his fins were torn up. Uh, he might have had a disease. I don't know. Nobody was buying them. I've been, I was watching him for months. Decided to pick him up. Got him super, extremely cheap. And he's a prime spec of a purple tank now and worth like 100 times his value that I purchased him for. Um, but the specific ones I recommend for the beginner, if you guys have a tank big enough, is the purple tang, like I have, uh, yellow tangs, coal tangs, powder blue tangs, and they're all really good. Coal tang probably being the smallest and better for maybe a little bit smaller tank. Purple tangs are very, very expensive, um, unless you can find them at Petco for like 20 bucks, which is what I got mine for. But otherwise, if you get a prime spec from a nice LFS, they're going to run you about $200. Um, but yellow tangs are around $40. Powder blue tangs are pretty expensive too. But they're so, so easy to take care of. They are more aggressive and can't live with every fish on this list. you got to house them with bigger fish like these dwarf angels and the two wrasses I have and the maroon clown. He won't bother those guys. Um... But you got to keep him with a little bit bigger fish. He is a semi-aggressive fish, so he will pick on some of the other fish on this list. So uh, don't mix them with those guys. They also love eating algaes. algae. Uh, you feed him seaweed. He pecks at the rocks. Uh, really cool fish. Um, and very personable. Uh, next fish on this list is wrasses. Uh, specifically fairy wrasses, um, flasher wrasses, and uh, six-line wrasses. I've never kept a flasher or a six-line, but I do have a fairy wrass, and uh, just I gotta I rave about this fish all the time because of its colors and uh, its personality and 
just like uh, what he does in the tank. Uh, very, very active fish. Uh, very interesting to watch, and the color patterns are just out of the world, out of this world. Uh, definitely pops in the aquarium. The one I have is a Lubix or a ruby head fairy wrasse. I'm not sure, but uh, he is totally cool. Um, I haven't seen him pick on hermit crabs or snails like the uh, the other Melanaris wrasse that I have. He's a hermit crab eater, but um, the fairy wrasse, I haven't seen him pick on any uh, of my cleaner crew. So that's definitely a plus. I'd say he's probably one of the most reef safe wrasses you could buy, along with um, flasher wrasses. Flasher wrasses are really, they're almost like fairy wrasses. They're just as good. Uh, they are probably the most reef safe wrasses that I've seen, uh, meaning they won't pick on your cleaner crew, or at least mine haven't. Uh, but they are. There's so many different kinds of wrasses, uh, and they come in so many different colors, and it's, they're just awesome. Gotta pick one up. They're really active, really fast, really, really hardy. I think they're disease resistant, and um, yeah, uh, very cool fish. Uh, they're very peaceful too. Um, my maroon clown does attack them sometimes. I don't know why, but uh, he doesn't bother anybody in the tank, that's for sure. Also, six line, six line wrasses. I've always wanted to keep one of those guys. Uh, they seem really cool. I know they patrol the rocks looking for anything crawling inside there, so they're very beneficial in the, to having a reef aquarium. Uh, they're really cool looking too. Uh, wrasses aren't too expensive. You could get some more pricey ones, um, but definitely the best wrasses if you want to get one as a beginner, definitely go towards fairy wrasses, flasher wrasses, or six line wrasses. I wouldn't get a Melanaris wrasse because they are a little bit more aggressive and uh, they do eat cleaner crews. Um, and they're, these guys are also a smaller species, so they won't get very big. And you don't need a very big tank to house them in. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's the next fish. Uh, and then, of course, can't have a top 10 beginner fish without cardinal fish. Um, probably one of my most favorite uh, saltwater fish of all time. I kept Banga cardinals in the past. If you guys go back to my BioCube series and early in this tank, they, uh, they're awesome. They're probably the most um, unique of all the saltwater fish because of their body formations. They got really, really long um, fins. Uh, start striking, uh, Bangai Cardinals have striking like uh, color patterns. They got that black and their bright white. Uh, super contrast and really, really cool. Pajama Cardinals are also pretty cool too. They're not, they're, I mean, they're more colorful, but their um, colors are more muted than the Bangai Cardinals. But they are, they're both awesome. So, so easy to care for. Um, they're very cheap. They're not expensive at all. Um, they school. Uh, ultimate, if you guys ever got a long spine anemone, you could have these guys, you could have a school of these guys and they will swim inside of, or uh, urchin, uh, the long spine urchin. It's so cool. Uh, but this is definitely, out of the whole saltwater hobby, probably the easiest fish to care for um, and the cheapest and most cool fish. Uh, so highly recommend it. You can keep these guys in 10 gallons of water. I have no problems. Uh, they're just super, super cool. Uh, beginners definitely go towards a Bangai Cardinal or a Pajama Cardinal. Um, next fish on this list are clownfish. Uh, very specific on this one. For beginners, you want to go towards Ocellaris clowns, um, Clarky clowns, or Saddleback clowns. Um, Ocellaris clowns being the best. Uh, they are really, really cool. Uh, I've kept them in the past. It's really cool if you get a pair. Um, with these guys, if you only get one and put them in your tank, 
That's the only clownfish you could have in that tank. You cannot add another one, otherwise the one in the tank or the one you add will kill the other one. If you want to have two or three, you have to buy them uh, all together out of the same tank so they know each other and won't fight. Even then, there's not a guarantee that they won't fight. But um, just remember that. Uh, but Ocelaris are probably the best for the beginner. Ocelaris comes, there are literally so many variations of them. It's impossible to list them all. They got like, uh, I don't know, like hybrids, so many hybrids. There's even a long fin one, it's crazy. Uh, but the most common are just the regular Nemo ones, orange and white, and uh, the other ones being uh, black, uh, black and white with white stripes. Uh, Ocelaris clowns are so cool, a staple in the hobby, and you could pick them up for like 20 bucks for like the regular black or orange ones, but you get frostbite clowns or like any of those long fin ones, they're seriously expensive, like 200 to like $300 for like those hybrid like weird ones but they're really cool so you can you could be talking some serious money in these guys um, but Clarky and Nemity fish are also really cool uh, not the best looking of all the clownfish um, but definitely a really cool clownfish uh, they're known to be some of the best hosting clownfish for um, non bubble tip anemones like condi anemones long tentacle anemones uh, they're known to host uh, some of those less common anemones, so if you got those anemones, then this guy's perfect. Also, the Saddle Clown, a really cool one, um, but I've never kept one, so I wouldn't know, but they're all really, really peaceful, uh, although some of them can get defensive if you had an anemone. They will get territorial, but as far as I'm concerned, they are all very peaceful. Um, and uh, yeah, the coolest thing about these guys is that they do host anemones, so that is just awesome. Um, so, that is clownfish. Uh, being number one on this list has to be firefish or dartfish. I love these guys. Um, definitely the easiest of all the freshwater hobby to care for. Um, Firefish are pretty much the ultimate beginner fish uh, for the beginning aquarist. They're so common, you can find these guys anywhere. Um, the regular dark fish is very, very cheap too. They got that super color, super cool color combination. Red, white, uh, they got that big like dorsal fin, a big spike dorsal fin, super awesome. Um, you got the common ones, and then you got the purple uh, firefish, which are pretty expensive. They're like 40 bucks for one, but they're awesome, awesome, awesome fish. Um, but they do school. They can school. They're super reef safe. And if you get a school of these guys, I've always wanted to try it. Uh, oh, man, I couldn't imagine what that would look like. It would look so cool. I have also kept a barred dark fish, uh, very awesome fish, uh, little muted colors. Uh, not as colorful, but they're pretty long and an interesting fish. They're so fast. Um, but one downside to these fish, is they are jumpers. They will jump out of a tank. I have this reef tank covered, and my dart fish, my barred dart fish that I had, jumped out three times. I managed to save him two out of the three times, but he jumped out the other day, and then he died. I didn't catch him in time. So they do jump. Um, so watch out for that. Otherwise, I think the firefish slash darsh fish is the ultimate beginner aquarium fish. Um, so yeah, guys, this has been Eagle Aquatics, um, ultimate beginner saltwater fish. And I uh, hope you guys learned something. Hope you beginners out there have an idea of what you guys want to buy. Um, and if you're thinking about starting a saltwater reef tank, definitely look at this list and uh, yeah choose from it and you guys will be successful for sure uh, so thanks for all the subscriptions I think I'm up to like 450 subscribers now so I thank you guys so much um, I'm gonna keep grinding out videos uh, please I want to hear what you guys want 
me to make a video on. I need some ideas. Um, I, I come up with a lot of ideas, but I want to know what you guys want to see. Uh, so definitely leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything. Uh, fish, tanks, equipment, fresh water. Leave a comment down below. I will answer it every single time. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys like this video. And one other thing you guys have been commenting, Eagle Aquatics, are you on Instagram? I am now. So um, look me up on Instagram. It's at Eagle Aquatics. No underscores, no spaces, no upper, uppercase letter, just Eagle Aquatics. I will come up. I don't have posts let yet, but I will be posting soon, as soon as I get some followers. So make sure to find me on there, follow me, and yeah, you guys will see uh, stuff that's not always on my videos. Uh, so yeah, guys, see you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you.